back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to integrate uh, and implement the FlickType keyboard on your watchOS app. So if you don't know already, FlickType is this awesome third-party framework uh, which basically gives you access to this full QWERTY keyboard on your watch. And from personal integration and use, it's remarkably well made. Huge shout out to the dev on this. Um, so yeah, we're going to be implementing this in a application written in a, written in Objective C. Um, the reason we're doing Objective C is because there is an example already for Swift, and I have personally been asked by colleagues and quite a few people online on how to implement this uh, and get it working. So we're going to be doing a fresh project and getting it up and running today. So with that said, I actually ran through this. So let's get rid of. Um, just kidding, I already got rid of it, it appears. I had a test project here, but basically, yeah, this is a FlickType keyboard. Let's just go through this really fast. So very, very cool to type on, very, very accurate, um, et cetera, et cetera. So let's, uh, let's close up Xcode here and let's get right into this. So for those of you who don't actually know, and if you're new to the channel, my name is Afraz. I am a Microsoft tech lead. I work on mobile, iOS, basically this channel is anything tech related. So give a like and a subscribe if you want to get cool new content on implementing stuff and learning really about iOS, but mobile and tech as a whole. So to get started, we're going to actually do two things. We're going to, of course, create a brand new Xcode project. So boot up Xcode, create a new application. You can make it a single view application. That's totally fine. We're going to call it test. All of this is irrelevant with the exception of making sure this is in Objective C. We're going to save it to our desktop. We're going to then create a WatchKit app target by going to new target. After that, we're going to select watchOS. We're going to add a WatchKit app. For the sake of this demo, the notification and complication are irrelevant. So I'm just going to uncheck it. Let's call this test watch. Let's save it in the default location, which it did for us. Beautiful. Let's just run this really fast so we don't have to wait for the simulator to boot every single time. Um, and once it's up and running, we'll go take a look at the actual repository. Cool. We have our simulator open. Um, it might ask for our password in a second. Um, the way that my keychain is set up, it may or may not for you. So give this a second. So while this is actually booting up, let's uh, over in your browser, if you actually go to just Google or any search engine and just search flick type um, space GitHub, you'll find this repository. Um, and what you want to do is you want to clone this via this link or this download button or download it to somewhere on your computer. In our case, we've put it on our desktop. We get a zip and once we unzip it, this is what we get. So. Yeah, basically, once you have gotten it, we're going to start going through these instructions down here, which are pretty, pretty to the point, pretty straightforward. But um, sometimes you get stuck with a couple little gotchas along the way. So we're going to do it together. So the very first thing you want to do is in your project folder that you just created, which is test in our case, you want to drag in the actual flick type, um, the flick type folder so i've actually put it outside here but if you first download it it'll be inside the swift example uh project but basically this is initially in here so you're going to want to open up this and drag this flick type folder into your current project that you want to integrate it into you can go ahead and close what you downloaded you can also close this finder window the next thing you want to do is in your extension let me just double check to make sure we're good, staying on the right track. You want to basically add uh, add the actual framework by linking it in the embedded binaries. And then you also want to add a build phase, which will actually do a lot of the compilation for you. Um, and specifically, if you're interested, what it does is it'll distinguish between the simulator environment and an actual watch environment um, for the sake of running. So let's go down in the watch extension. Let's hit that plus button next to um, embedded binaries. We're going to hit this button here, add other, which will show us our project. And in here, if we open up uh, the flick type, well, this is user data, which is not what we want. So let's actually go to 
desktop. Let's go back to this. Um, the test project we created. And in here, if we actually open up this flick type kit, we see the framework is in here. So let's go ahead and add this framework. It's going to want to ask the copy, which you do want to do. Cool. Now that we have this added, once we head back here, we need to create a new run script in our build phases and copy and paste this guy in. So I'm going to copy this. Let's copy this. And again, this is in the watch extension. We're going to head over to build phases. We're going to do this plus. We're going to add a new run script. I'm going to open this up and we're going to paste in that script. And the last thing you want to do here is make sure you drag this before compile sources. So this will do this will basically execute this run script prior to compiling source. Cool. The next thing you want to do is in the actual watch app, you want to copy some resources and you want to add a storyboard reference um, to the flick type storyboard uh, and we'll do that together. So we're going to go to this watch um, target and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy in here um, bundle resources. So we're going to open this, hit the plus, click this add other again. And in this flick type folder, I don't know why it keeps opening to user data, but it should open to your project. But in this flick type folder, you'll see app resources. If you open this up, you want to highlight this image in the storyboard and continue. It'll ask if you want to copy it, which we do. That's the point. Um, the next and second to last thing you want to do is head over to your watch app target in the hierarchy on the left head to its storyboard and we're going to do a couple things in here so first and foremost we want to add a reference and we're going to give the identifier as flick type in the attributes area so this basically references another storyboard so if you actually come down here it actually will tell you you can add a storyboard reference and you want to give it a reference id of flick type so let's actually just copy and paste this also for the sake of this demo we're going to add a button on our main interface controller which is going to be what we're going to tap to um, get the presentation of the text input view controller interface controller so we can have this keyboard option so let's just call this tap me the last thing you need to do and this is pretty important um, for objective c specific integration is you need to head back to your project and in the extension head to build settings select all Rather, let's just see if it comes up by searching it this way. What we want to do is look for Swift right here. Always embed Swift standard libraries. Let's set this to yes. I have had one instance where I had to do this for the watch app as well. However, the extension should be sufficient as you are integrating and using this framework in the extension and the watch app aspect of your application is simply going to be presenting the user interface. The underlying logic resides in the extension aspect of the application's implementation. So with that being said, let's head over to our interface controller for the watch. In the header, we're going to create a IB action, which is going to be linked up to that button we created. And once we hit that button, we're going to launch the text input controller and present the keyboard. So let's just call, let's just create an IB action. Let's just call it button pressed. And in here, we can ignore all these default lifecycle methods. And down here, we're going to paste, I guess it in copy. We're going to basically paste in this function that we've declared. And there's a couple of things we want to do. Um, 
Let's first compile and make sure everything is compiling and we don't have any errors, which we shouldn't, which, which we don't, which is awesome. Um, we're getting some flick type is unreachable stuff here, um, which hopefully shouldn't be an issue. Let's take a look. So here we have this as flick type, which is totally fine um, implementation wise. So let's let's move forward. If we have an issue, we'll debug as we go. So in the interface controller, let's connect that action to this button. And back in the code, let's import um, flick type. So up here or in your header, you can do an import of flick type kit like so. Um, I would compile before you try to import it. It's a container initially, so Xcode should recognize it. I have had an instance where I have to type out the fully qualified path, which is flick type kit slash flick type kit dot h, uh, which is its header for the framework. So now in here, we should be able to do a self present text input controller. And for suggestions, let's just give an array with one empty string. Allow input mode. Let's do WK input mode. Allow. Let's just allow everything. And completion. Let's just create a completion block like so. So if you actually go back and take a look at the README here, you can see the signature in Swift is the same present with suggestions. Um, allow input mode. And then there's a flick type mode. So what's interesting is if you actually, um, after this allow input mode, if you put a space and start typing in a flick type, you'll get the method signature for flick type that it picks up from the flick type framework. So um, keep in mind that this like kind of messes up like the signature, so you're gonna have to delete um, the bottom completion here because it basically redundantly added a completion parameter. So we can actually get rid of this. Um, but yeah, so this flick type mode, um, let's do mode ask if we want to use it. Flick type properties, let's give an empty dictionary. Starting text is going to be an empty string. And yeah, completion will um, basically take in items, which is an array, and the first item in that array should be the string that you inputted. So for the sake of this demo, let's just print it via an NS log. So we're going to say if items.count is greater than zero, let's just log out the first object in said uh, items. So if we run this now, that's about it. That's all you really need to do with the integration. Um, this is complaining because I forgot to put a semicolon because I code in Swift half of my days. So I forget time and time again. But if we go ahead and run this, uh, we'll see that the keyboard should pop up. So another thing that's important to take into account is um, this keyboard, actually, the flick type keyboard is you need to be whitelisted for it to run on your actual device. And to get your bundle ID whitelisted, you'll need to contact the developer, um, shoot them an email. They're pretty fast to reply. Um, but yeah, for the sake of development and testing on your simulator, you should be good to go here. I suspect they whitelist due to abuse and having to uh, connect and download their dictionary of words, which they, I assume, use to do predictive uh, fill in the keyboard when you're typing something. So when we actually click this, cool, we get this keyboard option here under our standard input methods. And when you tap this, it'll start downloading from what I presume is their backend, the uh, words in the text file, or however they have formatted, uh, a dictionary that they can use to predictive um, guess what you wanted to type in for accuracy's sake. So that's about it for the implementation. Um, I'm gonna probably pause the video here, let this download. It takes about two or three minutes. And there's no All right, so the FlickTab keyboard has finished downloading. So now we just get this button here so we can tap this and boom, we get our keyboard. Uh, we get this little info screen so we can just hit that. Um, you can of course hit uh, force touch and get some uh, help, but let's type in something. Let's see this in action. So let's clear out our console and let's type in we did it.
and let's hit done and boom down here we got we did it didn't get the it unfortunately uh, maybe I have done it too fast but yeah you guys get the point um, huge shout out again to the developer behind this who continues to work on this um, of course every time you click through this it doesn't need to download it again it's a one-time uh, downloading hashing uh, I presume again don't forget to uh, contact the dev via the email they have listed here and the other means to get your bundle ID whitelisted before shipping anything to the App Store. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a like if uh, you found this helpful. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Don't hesitate to ask any questions if you need some help, something isn't working. I would really appreciate a subscribe and a share of this video. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.